Let's see, this one again, this is the high performance version with the inrunner. Let's hold it, hold it down. <laughs> Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with another build video on the F-15C Eagle uh, Super Scale 90 millimeter EDF jet from Freewing. Came out a couple years ago, but still an awesome classic jet and something that I think all RC pilots who are into EDF jets and F-15C Eagle should probably live in your hangar. So now as far as this video goes, I'm gonna start out, run through the spec because there are three variations of the F-15C. You have the ARC Plus, you do have a standard version and then a high performance, which is what is in front of me. So we'll go through the spec, we'll do a full unboxing, show you how it comes out of the box. Then we're gonna do a full step-by-step -step build and then at the end, we'll go through the features, plug it in, show you some of the cool features like the air brake, show you the landing gear, things like that, and then show you some of the extra options that you can get for the FT F-15 uh, as well. So let's get started with the spec. As for the spec of the F-15, there are two versions. The only real difference between the standard version and the high performance version is gonna be the motor, and that's a difference between an outrunner and an inrunner. So we'll start with the standard version. Uh, again, the motor you're getting in the standard version is gonna be a 3748 1550 kV brushless outrunner, and that is being run by a 130 amp ESC with an eight amp U-back, and it is housed in a 90 millimeter 12 bladed EDF fan. The servos running throughout, you're going to have four 9 gram servos. Those are the ones running the nose gear steering, the gear doors, things like that, the air brake. Then you're going to have eight 17 gram metal gear servos, and those are running the flaps, the ailerons, the rudder, and the elevators. And now, as we said, for the high performance version, the big difference is going to be you're going from an outrunner to a brushless inrunner. And that motor is a 4068 1680 kV motor, which is going to give you more power. But again, both versions are running on 6S. It's just an absolutely gorgeous F-15C. So let's take it out of the box. All right, take it out of the box. You're going to see you have your manual and a little decal sheet. Then you got your carbon spar, that's gonna be for your main wing. And then right on top is the fuselage. And the fuselage is complete. You're not gonna have any sections to glue together or anything. It is a complete fuse and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Again, it's EPO foam, so the finish is beautiful with a nice paint job. And as we said, most of the decals are already applied, which is nice, especially the nose art looks really good. Looking at it underneath, you can see the landing gear. You have the nice gear doors. Those are going to be all scale and you know open and close servo driven gear doors hiding that beautiful landing gear. And then on the back of it, you can see the nozzles. I love the detail that they did to the nozzles. Uh, almost looks like they were 3D printed and painted. Um, they're absolutely gorgeous. Now out of the box, you have two foam bits. That's going to be for the back part of the fuselage. Then you're gonna have your nose cone, which is weighted and made of plastic, so that's always nice. You're not denting your foam if you have an issue there. You can stand it up on your nose if you're gonna store it that way, some people do. Next, you have your baggie. That's gonna include all your little peripherals, so they have plastic bits that are gonna go on when you're done uh, building, like a pitot tube, things like that. Then you also have your screws for the assembly, and then you're gonna have your extra control rods, some extra control horns, things like that. Next out of the box is your elevators, your full flying stabs. And then you have your vertical stabilizers and taking a look at these again the decals are already done for you i couldn't imagine having to do these myself to make them look as nice and then you'll see that the servos are already pre-installed the control rods are already installed everything there and they have nice little plates to cover the servos which is always a nice feature and then you have your main wings everything already installed as far as the servos go control rods uh, and you can just see really nice finish. You got plastic bits on the outside. You do have your lights all around and the wiring and we'll get to that as we get in the build. But overall, taken out of the box, looks very simple, very beautiful. And now let's get started with the build. All right, guys, getting into the build. Now, you'll notice in the manual, this was uh, an older Freewing model. So I guess they used to sell versions of aircraft where nothing was installed. So like we have the ARF Plus where at least all the servos and everything are installed. You just got to put in a power system. This manual is made for a version, I guess, where nothing was installed, where you're just getting the foam and you have to add all your servos in. So there's a lot of extra stuff in the manual that 
just doesn't apply to any of the versions that we carry now or that Freewing sells uh, going forward. So that said, the book has it laid out in a different way than we're gonna do this video, but uh, we're gonna get started with the elevator. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is attach your control horns to the elevator. So they provide six screws for this, each metal control horn slots in perfectly. It reminds me exactly like the new F-22. If, uh, if you put together one of those, it has the same type of setup. So what you're gonna do is take three screws per elevator to get the control horn in. Then your ball link is just gonna be used with the washer and, the, and you're gonna screw that on with the ball facing outside of the elevator, not into the elevator. And then they have the rotating shaft. So that's this silver piece. There's two of them and you'll see it has two notched edges. So the first thing we're gonna do is slide this into the back of the fuselage, and you'll see the two holes. What you're gonna use here are the eight millimeter flat bottom screws. You're gonna use two of them, and you're gonna lock that rod into place because the elevator is just gonna be uh, rotating on that rod. Then you're gonna slide the elevator now with the control rod already assembled to it, right over the rod, as you can see. And then you're gonna use the fix ring with the little screw that comes with it in the same baggie, and that's gonna slide right over the top of that metal rod that's now attached to your fuselage. And that's what's gonna lock it into place. That, that'll lock the elevator into place on the rod. And now the manual at this point says to attach your control rod. I don't like to do that yet. We'll do that a little later. I like to have the model bound to make sure my servers are centered before I do that. So next we'll move on to our twin rudders. So we'll start with one. Basically, this was a little tough uh, getting this installed. It should be pretty easy. You can see there are two wires coming out of uh, each vertical stabilizer, but you can see one is gonna be for your LEDs and one is gonna be for the servo. So just make sure your polarity is correct. You know, red to red, black to black, get those plugged in. But there isn't a lot of slack here. So I did notice it took me a little time just to work in the servo back into the little hole. You'll see in the plastic bit on the fuselage where this is going to attach to, eventually there's just a little hole down there with enough space for you to get the leads back inside. It might take a little manipulation to get it to sit flush, but eventually it will go. And then once you get it in, you're just gonna use four screws for each side. So eight total screws to get your twin rudders assembled. And there'll be two screws on the outside and two screws on the inside. Just get those screwed in and you're done with your twin rudders. So third, we're gonna do the main wing installation. So again, this is pretty simple. You're gonna start with a large carbon spar. Let's get that through and get that centered. And then you'll see there's some wire leads stuffed inside the fuselage in two different spots because there are a couple LEDs on these wings. One wire is more towards the front of the aircraft. You can see here by itself. And then the other three wires are gonna be for the LEDs on the wing tips. It's gonna be for the flaps and the aileron servos. So you just wanna pull those out, make sure you can see them. Then what you're gonna do is, is slide the wing over the main spar, and then what I do is put the spar that's attached to the wing, the smaller one, get that into the fuselage first, and then that can at least hold it into place, and then make all your connections, again, making sure your polarity is correct. Once you have everything connected, looks good, should be very easy to just push them back into their little slots on the fuselage, slide the wing in, and then you're gonna use two of the eight millimeter screws with the flat bottom and they have the blue thread on them. And that's gonna be used to lock your main wings into place. Now we're gonna get to some of the peripherals. So you have your nose cone. Again, that's just magnetically attached. So very simply, you could just slide that on. And then you're gonna have your baggie with your little plastic bits. So you can see here, just you're gonna be using the glue that's provided to just get these into place. And then on the back part, they do give you two little foam pieces that you're gonna, this is what you're gonna really need the glue for. That's just to finish off the fuselage right on the tail by the nozzles. You're gonna take these two pieces. And again, they are painted. So you just wanna make sure you rough them up a little bit before you do the gluing. Like I did here, I just used the X-Acto knife, made a bunch of holes on both spots, put on my glue, pressed it on. And again, put a little air in the mixture, get the stringies, let it, uh, you know, let it cure a bit and then attach it on and it ain't going anywhere. And then lastly, they give you this little sticker set with just a bunch of no step stickers because obviously they don't want you stepping <laughs> anywhere apparently on the F-15. There's about 50 stickers here and that's all you're doing is putting those on. But once you get them on, looks really nice. But again, those are the only decals you have to do. So once you're done, that's gonna be a fully built F-15C. So now let's get into the features. So now at this stage, guys, you should have a fully completed 
uh, 90 millimeter F15C. And as you can see, she's gorgeous. Uh, just <laughs> up close, she's beautiful. She has a lot of size, good weight to her. So now let's get in through some of the features that the F15C has. First things first, let's get into the canopy. So again, it's just your little latch and magnets and she comes off. And now it is a snug fit. Obviously it's an F15C, but the recommended battery is gonna be our Admiral 5000. You could probably go up to a 6000. I think for this model you want more than less. I probably wouldn't fly it on a 4000. Uh, but you could see in here it fits beautifully. And what I always like about a snug fit is there isn't too much that can happen with the CG. For the most part, you know, that's where the battery has to go. It can slide back just a little bit, but for the most part, it fits perfectly. So I'll take it out just to show you, but it is using the older setup. Like now, if this was made today, we'd probably have our new MCB-E, but it does have its own LED controller and then the landing gear controller that are already pre-installed. You don't really have to do anything. All the leads are gonna be there, but you're gonna need an eight channel receiver at least, uh, or at least a seven channel receiver if you wanted to power your UBEC separately. But if you want your UBEC going into your receiver like I have, you're gonna need eight channels. So that's gonna be your throttle, your your ailerons, your elevator, your rudder, your flap, then you're gonna have the landing gear, then you're gonna have the air brake, that's your seven, and then the UBEC's gonna go into the eighth port. That's what's gonna help to give you the power. But as you can see, everything fits in nicely. They give you a nice tray, a place where you'll be able to probably put your gyro and your receiver if you wanted to use it in a plane like this, and you again, your battery compartment right there. So let me get it in. So again, I'm just slotting it in for purposes not worried about CG here but I just want to show you the landing gear show you the air brake all that beautiful stuff functioning so let's see get it plugged in transmitters on beautiful so now you can see right off the bat you can see the lights so you have your wingtip lights are blinking red and green you have nice fixed lights that'll help with orientation in the dusk and you have the LEDs up here on the tail. You have your blinker on the uh, left stab and all red on the right. Then let's check the air brake, which I believe is, I put it on this switch. That's just cool. <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever use it in the sky. Uh, it's probably there more for just scale fidelity for looks. It looks cool on the ground, but I might give it a shot when I'm landing just to slow myself down. For the most part, I'd be worried more about the flaps and then your full flying stab looking really nice everything functioning well now let me put it on a rack we'll turn it upside down to show you the air breakdown show you the landing gear so while it's upside down flaps will look better there they are that would be full I probably wouldn't want them like that so you'll see servo driven nose gear door Gear drops in, and then all of them retract beautifully. I love that. Looks really cool. Now let's open them up again. Nice and scale. Gear pops right up. And then again, the nose gear will be driven with your rudder. You can see it turn, and also you have the LED on the landing light on the nose gear, which made a comeback for the F-22. Take a look at the underbelly guys. And again, if you bought the R plus version, you have your uh, two screws is gonna get access to your EDF. You have nice cooling for the ESC back here. Then also obviously guys, you got the aluminum trailing link uh, struts. So when you, when you hit nicely, they got a good bounce, good shock absorption, especially on the nose gear as well. Really nice aluminum upgraded struts. So you don't have to worry about your landing gear. Turn it back over. Then I'm gonna face that that way and I'm gonna gun it. Are you ready? Let's see. This one again, this is the high performance version with the in runner. Let's hold it. Hold it down. That's nice. There was a lot of thrust on that. So there it is, guys. That's a gorgeous rendition of the F-15. I can't wait to uh, fly it myself. But now I want to talk about some extra options because one thing you'll notice out of the box, you don't get any ordnance. So if you want those, they are available on the website and I have them right here. So what I'm going to do now is take them out, do a little unboxing of the ordnance, get them on the aircraft and then finish this video. So let's get going. 
So now the ordinate set will be found in the upgrade tab on the product page. And when you get it, you'll see here it comes in a large plastic bag, everything wrapped up though nicely, because it all, all the uh, missiles and drop tanks, they're all foam, so you want them protected. So when you take it out of the bag, you should expect to see two pylons. That's what's gonna connect underneath each wing. You're gonna have two large drop tanks. You're gonna have two Sparrow missiles. Those are the ones with the white tip. They'll go inside the wing. And then your Sidewinder missiles, the two with the silver tips, uh, they'll be on the outside part of the pylon when it's hanging under the wing. And then you also get four screws because again, the pylons are screwed on, they're not glued on to the wing. There are two plastic bits underneath the wings that are already there for you. So you just slide the pylon over, as you see. Make sure you uh, designate which side is right and left. It is written on the pylon, it is etched in the foam there. So you should have no problem finding out which way is which. But once you get it slotted on, you're gonna use the two screws, drive them in. And then it's just using the plastic bits. You can see like most missile sets uh, that you're gonna get or any additions, they do have the two plastic pieces that sort of slot into the plastic side on the pylon. So you just slide those on. Again, your uh, sparrows are gonna be on the inside part of the jet. Then your sidewinders are gonna go on the outside part. And then your drop tank just connects magnetically on the bottom part. And as you can see, once they're all on, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Looks like she's ready to go to war. So uh, if you want the ordnance set, it is available. Just head to the Upgrades tab and get it. And I know a lot of guys also use this ordnance set for other jets because it is a really nice set. All right, guys, so let's wrap it up. So that'll do it, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. Look out for a flight review from us coming soon, but obviously there's more than enough videos already of the F-15. Uh, the forum page is already packed with information. If you want to get more information about the CG, things like that, uh, people have done upgrades to it and things like that. So that'll be all across Hobby Squawk, RC groups, surely. So uh, like, share, and subscribe this video, guys. Like us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and uh, we'll see you for the next build and flight review. Bye.